What's going on people and welcome to Man Knows Football. You are here with Goonie. Before I do get into it, I do have to explain. Yes, the past two games I haven't made any content, but that's because I've got a lot of things going on in my personal life. Nothing bad, don't worry. Everything's good on our side. Blessings, thank God. You get me? But during this busy period, I will be trying to still make content for you. I will be doing the pre-records, but you see when I get back into the regular routine, I have been listening to the people that have been DMing. Goonie, when are the lives coming? When is the watch-alongs coming? When are the uh, player ratings coming? This, that, and the other. After speaking to Lee Gunner, big up Lee Gunner, yeah? It makes sense. So when I start getting back into the normal routine, we're gonna be seeing live, 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 live. I'm gonna be switching from the pre-recorded over to the lives. So your wish has been granted, people, and big up yourselves for the ones that have been asking. And obviously, please make sure you do like, share, subscribe, and leave your thoughts down there in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible, but understand it is a busy period for me. But let's talk about the main event. Chelsea 3 leads 2. And what I've got to say about this game, as a Chelsea fan, it was a roller coaster of emotions, but there were some beautiful things that I saw in there. Me, I come from like the 90s Premier League era where that old school rivalry, where that physicality was there, the arguing, the testosterone was through the roof. I felt that back a little bit, like it kind of rewinded the clock for me. I love the shit re in the game. Rich James also almost cut. So let's get into the main event. Chelsea 3 leads 2 and what an eventful game it was. And as a Chelsea supporter, my heart has only returned back to regular rhythm. Boy, was that a stressful watch, but it had shades of things that I love about football and that I missed about football. Listen, I've been watching football since like the 90s, so I come from that era where like rivalries was fierce, you get me? Like the testosterone was through the roof, the challenges were just mental, and then like after the fights, during, I mean after the fights, after the games, there'd be fights, arguments during the games, it would just be all this and that, and we saw that, and obviously the main instigator was the main man himself, Rudiger, who actually, listen, he made a case for himself today. Yeah, Marina, if you're listening to this video, yeah, on the 1% chance you're listening to this video, sign that brother. Give him what he wants. You get me? That shithouse mentality is what we've been missing since Diego Costa left the club. And I've missed it. I love having Rudiger around. What's the brother asking for? At the level that he's playing at, he's asking for what? Like 200 bags a week. Your Chelsea football club, fam. Pull that money out and give him the money. He deserves it. Yeah, he's been a leader. These are the characters that you need. You need these characters. You need someone who's willing to work and win ugly. To give that, like, to send that energy around the rest of the team. You remember Diego Costa back in the day, yeah? There'd be games where we look like we're down and out. And he'd just be like, I'm not having it. Grab the game by the scruff of the neck and just drive us forward. He won the last time we won was because of that. Go back and watch how well Diego Costa performed in the first half of the season. Between that, August to December, he was unplayable. After then, we all know what happened with Conte and him. But we need that character in the squad, and Rudiger showed his importance today. But on that note, it was good to see that old school kind of rivalry back. If you remember from the 90s, Leeds back in the day, that rivalry that we had with them, um, it stemmed from, it stemmed from, I believe it was a cup competition. Listen, my history is hazy. I burn so much weed, so sometimes I forget, yeah? It was, it was dubbed as, like, I think the most dangerous game. Like, I think the, the commentator said, if it was refereed now, there would have been like 10 or 15 red cards in that game. That's how mental that game was. So, like, there, there is a lot of rivalry, so it was good to see that. But, look, we started off the game on the front foot, but it was one of those ones where you could see from the beginning what Leeds' tactics were. As soon as we get, as soon as they turn over the ball and we're in possession and we hit them on a the counter attack, we're going to go straight on that left side and target Marcus Alonso. And that's what they kept on doing. That's what they did. Any opportunity that they got, they played that ball down that left side to Rafinha. Rafinha one-on-one -on -one with Alonso. Um, and that's how they got their first goal, the opening goal of the game. Um, Alonso was in the box. In fact, he actually, this is what I will say about that challenge. It wasn't a stupid challenge. The execution was just terribly slow. Yeah? Because you see with Marcus Alonso, he saw, watch it again. He saw the opening and that was the time to go for it. But the execution was so slow. It looked like a robot that was just rusted at the joints, fam. Yeah, when he lunged in from that for that tackle. 
And by the time he made that tackle, obviously the player had time to get in front of the ball. Boom, it was always going to be a penalty. And the way this man was like, oh, to the ref, bruv, you knew you made contact. You didn't touch the ball. He was embarrassed. It was poor. And this is what I'm saying about Marcus Alonso, yeah? Yes, he did redeem himself for the one run, which we'll come on to. But I judge players by their primary job, yeah? Marcus Alonso's primary job as a wing back is to make sure he can defend that left flank. Yeah, and clearly he is not able to do so. What I saw in terms of that tackle told me everything that I need to know. He is a defensive liability because we cannot be having too many of them in the box. We're lucky that this is Leeds United. Had this had been a Man City or a Liverpool or, or, or Manchester United, they might have not been any way of coming back into this game. You understand? So we're lucky that it's Leeds. We need to address that. 1-0. Obviously, Chelsea, we respond very well. Marcus Alonso makes up for his mistake well he's he's slowly time tackle in that box and um he actually counter presses at the top final third of the lead half counter presses very well boom wins possession drives that ball nice and low finds mason mount with a cool left footed finish runs over and shushes the liverpool uh, the, the liverpool the leeds crowd yeah because after Rafinha scored that penalty, he decided to celebrate in front of the Chelsea fans. So from that point, you knew it was on, innit? Mason Mount runs over. Shh, what was you saying? 1-1. One, one. You get me? Nice way to go into the first half. Um, good time to score as well. We could have actually had a second, but unfortunately we didn't get it. I thought there was a shout for Marcus Alonso. There could have actually been a penalty because... Um, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Ailing who had hands all over him. Might have been soft, but I've seen him give them before. Leeds got away with that one. But come second half, it starts off as the first half was. End-to-end -end stuff. Chelsea's positioning at this point is out the window. Leeds, they're playing some good football. They're bypassing our midfield. They're getting in behind. They are creating chances. Chelsea, we are controlling possession very well. But that's about it. I can't really say that we're really penetrating and, and, and creating chances. And creating good enough chances anyway. But we got lucky. A penalty incident occurs. Rudiger receives the ball deep in the box. These centre-backs, these defenders are finding themselves in behind the other defenders, which is mad to me. You get me? Two calls just working some next tactics, blood. Finds himself, again, in behind in a dangerous position. Draws the defender in. Literally, you can see Rudiger. Everybody in their dog knows what Rudiger's doing. He's waiting to draw in the tackle to get the penalty. Defender, he laps it up like a dog to his pedigree chum. You get me? Laps that completely up. Boom. Penalty. Jorginho steps up. Whack. 2-1, you get me? At this point, I'm happy that we're up and I tweeted, yeah? 2-1 up, we've got to see this through. I'm not getting excited because I've seen us. I've seen us bottle it from this position before, especially how we're defending right now. There's always an opportunity for Chelsea to concede a goal. And when we concede, it's very, very difficult for us to come back and get three points out of that. So I was still quite worried, especially the nature of the game, end-to-end -end stuff. Um, let me say something about that left side before I forget because this was a very ugly win But that left side was suffering not only Marcus Alonso, but Timo Werner on the counter-attacks He's slowing down the counter-attacks why Timo hasn't got a touch He leaves the ball behind or his touch lets him down or when he's under pressure He does he makes the wrong decision sometimes there's options available around Timo Werner But because he cannot control the ball properly He takes too many touches before he can make that pass you get me? Anyone else, they bring the ball down, they make the decision, they're off. They make their move to the next position. Timo takes a touch. Oh, it's gone over there. Got to bring another touch, bring it back under control, then play the pass. That's why Timo just gets pressed out of the game. It's getting to a point now where even in open games like this, Timo is useless on that wing. Which brings me the question, why didn't hudson Odoi just start on that left side? Timo Werner, I've lost complete trust in the brother. He might do one or two good things. Yes, he had a good performance against Zenit, but this is the Premier League and this is the title that I want us to win. You get me? And Timo is not cutting it. Yeah, so even nobody really had a good game except really Rudiger off the top of my head. Jorginho as well. Big up Jorginho because we know that he's been playing through a pain barrier as well. He did say after the game that he wasn't really too comfortable in the game. Was feeling a little bit of pain in the lower back. You get me? So... 
Big up Jorginho, man, playing through that barrier and still having a very decent game. It was an ugly win, man, and to be fair, it was three individual errors from Leeds that got us that win. And it's quite ironic because that's been the story of our losses and our draws, individual we errors. Up. We're two and up. I'm just hoping that we hold on to the lead. Leeds, going back to the textbook, looking at Chelsea's left-hand side, attacking down that left-hand side with a completely disjointed back line, Chelsea back line. They get the ball in, boom. Joe Geldhart, who's on for 81 seconds, fires in the equaliser. I break glasses. I've broken two pairs of glasses, actually. One was actually, like, very expensive. I won't even say how much they were. Those are in the bin. And then I broke... These reading glasses that don't even belong to me, it was just the closest thing that was inside. That's how much I love Chelsea. They make me mad, bro. I swear down. They just make me vexed these days, blood. Because when you look at it, yeah, we was all sitting here bragging about, well, I was bragging about clean sheets, defensive record this, defensive record that. We have conceded eight games, eight, in, eight goals in a week. Eight goals in a week. That is poor. That is poor, and that is cause for concern. Is it because Alonso coming in disrupts that balance, disrupts that trust? I don't think so. I also think it's the case of N'Golo Kante being out, and it's the case of Kovacic being out. Kovacic being out has, hasn't been spoken about enough, in my opinion, because when he's in that pivot, he also helps protect that defence very well. He gets a lot of yellow cards for a reason. He's a tenacious midfielder. He helps out that defence. And I do believe when he comes back in and that pivot is back to normal, he will help out Alonso on that side if Ben Chilwell is a long-term injury and by some crazy reason we don't address it in the January window, then I think that that's going to help Marcus Alonso a little bit. So I look forward to um, Kovacic coming back. This time round again, Rudiger showing his importance again to the squad. That shit housery, winning a penalty again in the dying minutes. Stoppage time wins a penalty. Jorginho steps up dispatches Stamford Bridge is going crazy Leeds fans are silenced Chelsea are surely at this point running away with three points and that's exactly what happened final whistle blew but the game wasn't over there because the Leeds players were not too happy with Rudiger and that is the last person that you want to piss off or I think at least it went that way but either way Rudiger was involved he was you get me center of attention as he usually is when there is beef but this is what I'm saying. We have missed him. We have missed, when I say him, that kind of profile of player. Since Diego Costa gone, we haven't had that. And that is a winner's mentality. It's, that's the player that every other team hates, but they wish they had him. Yeah, and this is Diego Costa part two, but this man's a centre-back. Marina, you have to sign this man to another contract. 200 bags, that is reasonable for a world-class centre-back of his quality with what he offers. As good as he is defending, you see why I'm different with him? He's quality defending, although recent games, as a collective, they've been poor. He's a quality world-class centre-back. And he provides an attacking threat going forward. He's got the correct balance. We need to keep this guy. He's going to be integral for Chelsea to be winning titles. I'm telling you. More of that mentality in the squad. Definitely. But to be honest with you, it was a harsh reality from Leeds. And it was three individual mistakes, really, that, that led to Chelsea's win. And we can't be riding our luck like that. And we really need to find a solution for that left side. Because better teams are just going to pick us off. And no doubt, if we continue like this, we can kiss this title chase goodbye. Yeah, December has shown that it's been an ugly, ugly month from, for Chelsea. I just want it to be over. Hopefully, we can string some more wins and continue to be in the title race. You get me? Well, unfortunately, we're now at a point where we're having to look at Man City. We have to look at Liverpool to be dropping points and us to be not. This is not where I wanted to be. This is not where I wanted to be. But unfortunately, it's circumstances outside of everybody's control. Injuries happen. These are human beings. We've even got players playing through pain barriers. So, we've got a big up. The players that are doing that, we understand that players are just human beings. But literally on that note, big up yourselves. Thank you to everybody who's been patient with me. And like I said, when I do come back on the regular schedule, it's going to be live, 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 live and lives. You get me? What matters is we want ugly and in any title chase, 
Winning ugly is needed. Three points at the end of the day. We pick them up and we move on. Forget about that performance. We need to build on that. We need to do much better. Too cool come January. If you do not find a solution for this Alonso situation, I'm afraid any kind of serious silverware, in my opinion, is going out of the window. But, like I said, big up yourselves. Three points, Chelsea. Hopefully, we're on back to winning ways. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please be safe. Bless.